So when somebody asks me what I do for a living and I tell them I make YouTube videos, they usually look at me pretty excited and just intrigued. And then when they ask me what type of videos I make and I tell them I talk about sneakers, they look at me pretty confused. Like, how is that even a thing? Guys, we just hit 500,000 subscribers on the channel. So to celebrate, here's the story of how I went from recording YouTube videos in the corner of my bedroom to now having multiple studios. You see, before YouTube was ever even a thought on my mind, Back in college, which was 2016, I was studying to become a personal trainer. Alongside that, I was also working at KFC. Fun fact, that was my first job. See, back then, fitness was everything to me. I started training myself when I was 14 years old, and my goal of wanting to help others in the gym and just get better with my own training always led to becoming a personal trainer. After three years of studying, I finally qualified and actually secured my first job as a personal trainer. So I did what any Anybody would do. Quit my job in the first year of working there, take the last thousand pounds in my bank account, and move to Australia. Now, I think from the outside looking in, this was somewhat of a reckless decision, a reckless thing to go and just quit your job after so long of studying and uh, trying to become a personal trainer. But to me, I was still young. I still wanted to kind of figure out what I wanted to do in life, so it seemed like a good opportunity to try something new. Little did I know at the time, but making the decision to move to Australia and uproot my my life was going to be one of the best decisions I ever made. Now thinking about it now, I was completely broke and I was just about to experience some of the toughest times of my entire life as well. I never really knew week to week if I was going to be able to make rent. I was picking up odd jobs like I think one I took out there was in a call center. Uh, I literally got fired the second day working there because I wasn't making enough sales. Eventually I landed a somewhat secure job at a hotel being a cleaner and this was the first time where I could kind of relax and enjoy the country that I was moving to because now I've got a job, I know my paycheck is coming in, I can kind of chill out and just reflect on life. This is exactly when I started making my first YouTube video. Now, ever since I was a kid, I always really enjoyed fashion and sneakers. Now, I grew up in South Africa and we were actually super poor growing up, so when I say enjoying fashion and sneakers, it wasn't like I was out there able to go shopping for new outfits and buying new sneakers on a regular basis. It was more of just the fact of like, I had maybe one or two pairs and I would try and piece together the most creative outfits I could with what I had. Somewhere along the line, I found myself really enjoying sneaker content. This was a few years, I believe, before Australia, but it's just something that, again, I have an interest in sneakers, so sneaker content on YouTube was great. I could watch the latest reviews, uh, watch unboxing videos, and that's something that I always kind of really enjoy. Living out in Australia at that time kind of made me feel like, well, I can try different things, try new stuff. I don't have to be afraid of failing. So I decided to just give it a go. I would go to the shopping center and go to one of like the sneaker stores, pick up whatever the latest release was at the time, bring it home, test it out, talk about it on camera, and then clean it up and return it immediately so I could eat that week. Over the next few months, obviously, I'm still working this job at the hotel as a cleaner, but I would get home from work, uh, and if I had enough money to be able to go and buy a pair of shoes, that's exactly what I would do. And I'd talk about it and make a video. In fact, I even tried to do some different types of content while I was out there, like getting some vlog footage and different, like I think I did an outlet shopping video. Now living out in Australia, as someone from the UK, you can get a working holiday visa, which basically means you have 12 months to live in that country. When it finally became time to move back home to the UK, well, I'd also accrued over 10,000 pounds of debt. So I literally got back to this country and needed to get a job immediately. So I went back to personal training but I still had this feeling like I really wanted to give these YouTube videos a chance. So I decided to continue making them alongside now being a personal trainer back in the UK. Now again, I'm making all of these videos and obviously not making a dime from YouTube. Like I had about a hundred subscribers and again, just really trying to make enough money from personal training and trying to bring some of that money into the YouTube channel to buy equipment, uh, to obviously buy sneakers to review. Obviously I'm working a full-time job, so I'd wake up at 6 a.m. I train myself and then spend all day training clients, get home at about 4 p.m. and immediately just start trying to set up my studio and talk about a pair of shoes 
edit the video, make the thumbnail, and then just post it. And then of course do that all again the next day. Now this is when 2020 rolled round, and obviously that was the pandemic. It hit, everybody was locked down, and they couldn't go to work. Now obviously everybody's experience of being locked indoors was different, but to me, I saw this as a massive opportunity. I now have the ability to just focus on making as much content as possible. I made a challenge to myself where I was like, I'm gonna make a video every single day. Even if it's not a good enough video to be able to post, I'm just gonna make a video so I just get better at speaking to a camera and just trying to perfect my video. But in doing this challenge with myself of 30 days, 30 videos, I just found myself posting a lot more to my channel. And in May of 2020, I received my very first paycheck from YouTube for seven pounds 32. Now this to me was the moment where I just kind of realized like, yo, you're getting an actual paycheck from freaking talking to a camera and making YouTube videos. I knew that this is something that I've just really enjoyed no matter whether I'm getting paid for it or not. So now I really need to see where this can go. This is kind of when all of the lockdowns were lifted. Everybody started going back to work, which meant I had to now go back to work, uh, a full-time job and try and keep up with the amount of content that I've built up over the pandemic. I was posting like five or six videos a week and I wanted to make Make sure that I maintained that level of consistency while working the full-time job. Now this ended up being very, very challenging. If my days weren't already stacked before, now it was literally morning till night I was either personal training or I was making YouTube videos. Now this actually ended up going on for years until January 2022. I'll always remember this. That's the day I decided to take the leap to actually quit my job. I had 50,000 subscribers at that time. I wrote up my resignation letter, handed it in, and uh, well, obviously I haven't looked back. Now, to be clear, at this time, I wasn't suddenly making a ton of money from YouTube. I only had 50,000 subscribers, but it was enough to survive and enough to keep me going so I could just focus 100% on content and kind of be all in on it. Now I would imagine most other people quit their jobs a lot further down the line where they actually know that maybe YouTube is gonna be a little bit more of a sure thing. So at this point, I'm a full-time YouTuber, but I was still living at my girlfriend's parents' house. So we had our bedroom uh, and my studio was this tiny little section in the corner. So I had like a shelf with some sneakers behind it. And this is where I would record all of my videos. Obviously because it was in the bedroom, every single morning or every single day when I wanted to record, I'd have to build up all of the lights, put the tripods ready, get the camera focused. And then obviously in the evening, I had to tear all of this down and do it again the next day. I then go down to the river and that's where actually to this day, I still shoot all of my B-roll and test out sneakers. So that's something that's never changed. Still record on an iPhone. Thinking about it now, it was a pretty massive risk just quitting your job with 50,000 subscribers and then just being all in on YouTube. So as you can imagine being in this tiny space of a bedroom, tearing my studio down every single day just to build it back up to try and record a video. This got old very quickly. Stuck it out for as long as we absolutely had to. Obviously, I had to pay off all of my debt. As soon as I had made enough money to actually move house, I did. Now, moving house was a massive game changer. I did make a vlog on the channel of like the whole process and how much it meant to finally have a place where I could literally have an entire room as a studio just for recording recording videos. And just having that amount of space really helped me improve the quality of the content that I was putting out and even allow me to experiment with different types of content. At the same time, the channel was growing really quickly back then and I started running out of space. What happened next was a goal that I've had my entire life becoming a reality. And that was moving into a house right next door to my brother. See, Dylan and I have always been super close growing up. He's my best friend and we've always just done everything together because of the exact exact same time that I was building my career as a content creator, so was he. And it's crazy because we both at the exact same time reached points in our content creator career where we could both have the opportunity to get a house next door to each other. I mean, this is something that we've literally always wanted to be able to do. We're both very involved with each other's content from helping each other come up with new ideas, new concepts, and new opportunities for different videos. But having him right over there just opens up even more doors to new 
possibilities of us bringing our content together. And now we're here, guys. We have hit a massive milestone together. A place where I honestly never could have imagined that we would be. To spare you all of the cliche things that normally come with someone hitting a milestone, I just want to say I'm thankful for every comment, like, every message that I receive. And I will end this video off with something that you guys requested. So I asked you guys over on my Instagram what you wanted to see in a 500k video. The answers you guys gave is pretty much what this video is. But also there was a lot of requests for a giveaway. Now I never do giveaways because it almost just seems like you're trying to promote something rather than actually saying thanks. Here's what we're gonna do. For anybody who has actually stayed to the end of this video, I'm gonna give away any $500 sneaker that you want in your size. All you need to do is just chuck a comment on this video saying that you watched to the end. Just head over to my Instagram and drop the same exact comment on my 500k post. I'm gonna pick someone at random from my Instagram comments. I'm gonna send you a DM if you win. Just note that this and my Instagram page that is verified are the only places that are me. There's a lot of scams out there, so just make sure that I have that blue check on Instagram and the tick mark over here on YouTube. Thank you so much, guys, for being a part of this entire journey, and this truly is just the beginning. Trust me, guys, there is way more to come.